This is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. Hello there, Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, for those that are watching live, uh, they're the only ones that are going to get that. Um, you know, it, it's kind of funny. So, at the obviously, I always announce my name and then my online, wherever you can find me, name being Shut Your Trap. And yet people are still surprised in forums where they go, wait, you're the guys that do the podcast? Really? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, well, okay. I, I, I couldn't be more clear every single time, but maybe there's a lot of shut your traps out there. I don't know. There's not really. <laughs> 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 when I do, when I type your name to Twitter, there's only a couple that come up. So yeah, you know, yeah. Um, so I, <laughs> Jared, clearly we're not doing this correctly. Um, are you familiar with uh, who Joe Rogan is? Joe Rogan, uh, vaguely, yes. Remind me. Joe Rogan, uh, used to be an actor. He well, used to be. I think he still does stand up sometime. He does all the commentary for UFC fights, and he also has, depending on the service, uh, a top three podcast of everybody in the world. Oh <laughs> right, okay. Um, right. If you if you go over to YouTube, uh, Joe has almost 2,000 episodes. And when I say episodes, these are like two to three hour long episodes with Jeez. people, with, you know, celebrities and uh, politicians and people that he talks to and everything. It's a, a it's a, absolutely a very, very good uh, podcast, um, video-wise. The reason why I say that we're doing this wrong is Spotify just signed him to yank all of his videos off of YouTube and prom put them over on Spotify, who I guess is now going to be doing videos and do his mm -hmm. podcast exclusively over there to the tune of a hundred million dollars over the next couple of years. $100 million. <laughs> hey, $100 right. million. Dollars. I actually, I actually saw, saw a tweet, tweet relating to this the other day, and I had no idea what it was talking about. I was going, what? Joe Rogan? Spotify? What? <laughs> didn't I also didn't have the uh, <laughs> the cares to actually go and research any further than the tweet, because I did not know who this guy was. But um, yeah, apparently, I didn't read the tweet, so I don't really know the backstory, but some people are saying that was a really dumb move on his behalf. <laughs> I, don't, I wouldn't say it's a dumb move on his I mean, here's the thing. He's got like... 4.4 million subscribers on YouTube. Mm. Now, I'm sure he's making money off of the advertisements there, but he's yeah. going to flip over, and his whole thing was, you got to be just like YouTube was, which is absolutely free for anybody to be able to do. They just, you know, have to put up with the ads like they do on YouTube if they're not, you know, a YouTube Red subscriber, basically, or mm. Reach Premier, I don't know, whatever the, whichever their more expensive services. Um, yes. So, technically, everybody should be able to follow over but tell me another podcaster that's earning a hundred or youtube sensation that's earning that kind of dough <laughs> oh i don't know i i i, I generally don't follow those type of youtube accounts so i wouldn't be able to tell you that but that's what i'm saying i you you hear about youtubers that are you know pulling in 10 million a year like uh, pewdiepie etc exactly well i mean mm. shoot if he can let's say this deal is for the next five years. I'm, I would be happy with $20 million a year. <laughs> $3 million a year would be able to sustain my lifestyle as I currently know it. Yeah, it would be all Shoot, right. I'm happy just getting, you know, games codes sent to <laughs> <laughs> Exactly right. Well, certainly for this profession that we're both doing now, like, uh, yeah, getting the odd game code here and there sort of, uh, yeah, it's pretty sweet, you know. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I, I guess... Uh, 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 the, our drive isn't quite what his is. <laughs> well, well, we don't do it for the money. We certainly don't do it for the fame. Uh, so we just do it because reasons. Because of reasons. Because stuff and things. <laughs> hey, wait a second. We got to save that for the end there. Um, yeah. Okay, so let's... Uh, we're going to kind of dive right in here, folks. Mm. Um, hold on. I got to get... Uh, Get a little window action going on, so that I'm staring at the uh, the proper thing. Um, <laughs> oh, window action! Not not that kind of window action. Um, 
<laughs> so we want to we want to uh, start things off by we posted this week a uh, little notification that we saw that Jared specifically saw regarding our friends over at Arcuda, and that was a banner that said closing indefinitely. Hmm. It was a little bit ominous. And it's, it's up there now. It didn't stay there for a while. And uh, it wasn't actually me who found it. One of uh, the friends of the show, Ed Partridge, who um, you know, you'll know from previous uh, exploits as uh, the guy who's uh, doing all pinball and paywall games there. He said, uh, so, yeah, more delays? <laughs> that was his message to me. And I went, oh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, not, not really good at all. Well, and, and the sad part is, is it's just like they keep on coming so close, so close to it seems like finally having product that people will have in their homes. And then something happens. And this time around, yeah. it's, you know, good old COVID-19 disrupting uh, manufacturing distribution services. But, uh, you know, I, I firmly believe that, uh, as with a lot of companies, it's just everybody's kind of being put on hold for the moment. Um, yeah. You know, pretty much. So hopefully uh, we wish them all the best and hopefully we'll hear more news from them. Now, the flip side of that is something that I've read about uh, Arcade 1UP regarding how booming their business has been because of good old COVID-19. Yeah, they've been getting like I've I don't know the number I forgot the numbers off the top of my head, but they are astronomical amount of units sold. There's so, a million or something, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so in the two years that they've been selling these cabinets, they have sold over one million arcade cabinets, which is <laughs> astounding in two years. That's a time. loss. Yeah. Um I mean we're not talking about, you know, Xboxes here, folks. It's a <laughs> it's physical a product that only has a limited room. amount of things, you know. Yeah. That's um, huge. And then on top of that, since March, which basically is when the U.S. went into uh, lockdown mode, mid-March, uh, mm. they've been doing 96% week-to-week better <laughs> in sales. <laughs> because everyone's bored. <laughs> right? But the amazing part is, is they're not having any problem with distribution. Um, I don't know who it is they oh. were using or where they're distribute or manufacturing their parts or whatever, but they said that they had enough of the arcade cabinets in stockpile that uh, they were able to pull from that, and that was therefore not overwhelming the manufacturing. And so they've been able to keep up and keep on going. So where Toy Shock had announced that they were going to have to uh, push when, what is it, the, the 2.0? Actually, and the yeah. 1.2 come out. Everything's being That's pushed right. farther down the, the pike. Um, hopefully, 1-Up's not having to push anything, and we'll still see that Star Wars cabinet come out, uh, I believe they said third quarter. And mm, we're, something like that. Yeah. We're getting close to entering third quarter of the year. That, that would be, be good. good. Yeah. So hopefully that's uh, they're still on track there. Um. <laughs> Oh, I love that comment right there, Jared. They 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 don't want to wait for uh for anything else to be going. Any new tables for Pinball FX three and beta? I don't know. Mm. <laughs> That's we we can't confirm or deny anything. Um, sorry. Yeah. So it's about that. Yeah, that's about that. Um. <laughs> And then they promptly clicked away and said, "I'm not listening to this anymore." Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But stick around. This is what we do. Um, so anyway, yeah, I thought it was really fascinating, though, that they're not having any any issues with that. And here's the thing. I think this bodes really, really well for pinball, digital pinball in general. Um, mm. Because Toy Shock was saying that they had no problem with their initial release, selling out everything they had manufactured. Um, no, that went really, really quick, quick, actually. Right. <laughs> and yeah. now you're going to have 1UP coming out with their cabinets. And yep. so hopefully that does. And what that does is it just raises the profile of digital pinball in general. And once you've got the profile raised and once you've got a larger user base, then you're going to start gathering attention like we've touched upon before of people that go, hey, what's this thing that I'm seeing in Target and Walmart that uh, everybody's scooping up and how can I become a part of it? Yeah, because, because you know, know, everyone doesn't, doesn't want to be, um, you know, they don't want to keep up with the Joneses, Joneses right? So if someone else has one of these things in their lounge room, well, of course they're going to want one, you know. 
or more right and and you know you're gonna get these people that are like well hey you know that license that uh i don't know what to do quite with hey do you guys want to do something with it uh mm. so that's kind of the hopefully that's that's what i would hope i i really really want this to open up the doors more kick the doors down basically for zen um because mm. again we've seen what they've been doing with uh with the williams license that they have right now everybody is hoping that they'll eventually secure the stern license but if you secure that stern license then there's all those third-party licenses that are going to have to go and yeah it's true those things are going to get costly and i would point out that cost because uh just announced also and believe me i'm so on board with this uh tony hawk pro skater one and two remastered in 4k the trailer that dropped it looks just fantastic um the company that's making it is actually using the uh physics code that neversoft used for those oh, first two okay. games yeah so it's going to still feel like it should. Tony Hawk. Yeah, because apparently, I, I suddenly, of course, I've been doing a YouTube deep dive, and um, somebody was talking about the last Tony Hawk remaster that came out, uh, Tony Hawk HD, and they were saying it looked decent. It was made in Unreal Engine, uh, Unreal Three, but the physics just were not the same, and that kind of ruined the whole feel of it. Yeah, you know, that reminds me quite a bit of, you know, the reason why the Daytona 3 and stuff didn't do very well in the arcades is because, oh, sorry, Daytona 2 and you know, probably Daytona 3 as well. It didn't do well in the arcades because Daytona 2, it just didn't feel like Daytona. And if if you're used to playing a game, particularly if you have nostalgic feelings about something like Tony Hawk, which is a hugely popular franchise, one of which I did not get into, but... I, I know it was massive. Large was enough that the, the I think, the, uh, was it the second game? I think it is still the number two best rated game on Metacritic. Insane, right? That's <laughs> And I, I know that Netherworld ran a, a Tony Hawk 2, a, a Tony Hawk tournament down here. So they had a whole lot of PlayStations all, all hooked up, ready to play Tony Hawk. And there was like, you know, some serious competition going on because people love it. Yeah. So you know? the, but... Now, one of the big things is everybody that, I mean, it, it part of what made the game was the soundtrack, right? So mm -hmm. they went yeah. back and tried to secure all the licenses. There's 26 songs between the first two games. And by the looks of it, they've been able to secure 18 of those songs. And basically what they came out and said was, look, it ain't so easy to secure things from the 90s anymore. <laughs> um, there's yeah. plenty of bands that just don't want to be a part of something like this or think that they're worth even more now and so they price themselves right out of it uh, and that's what I'm hoping is the opposite of what will happen with these pinball tables coming out on these platforms like 1UP and what Toy Shock has because maybe these bands and stuff will still be receptive to the idea and be like, hey, no, you know what? You're putting you're putting our music in front of all these eyeballs again. Great. The downside is is that a lot of these artists are like, yeah, but we've moved on from that song. We don't want to play that song anymore in concert. Uh, we want to sell our new album. Uh, wouldn't you rather have our new song? Uh, and I think that's where uh, the licensing kind of gets kind of tricky, especially especially when it comes to music. Because music's hard. Very hard. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, just, again, ask Stern. <laughs> with, yeah, exactly. You know, with the, with, the, with the music tables that they've put out, and they lose the, they, the, the, the contract runs out, and that's time to go to, back to Vault Edition, and it's like, hey, did that price just go up? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> you know, or, or securing, I'm sorry, when they made the Beatles table, do you think that was cheap? getting that music yeah no it, it wasn't and that's why the table costs so much yeah very very much um so here's the question that we want to pose to you folks and it's kind of because it got me thinking about it. while well a couple of things have been getting me thinking about this i've been going back and watching movies 
uh, old movies or older movies from the 90s, uh, mm-hmm. of which a few then have, wouldn't you know it, licensed t- titles in uh, Zen, like Jaws and E.T. and Jurassic Park. Mm-hmm. Jurassic Park's the ones that I've been going back and watching right now. Um, yes. And of course, we've kind of touched upon this before when you're playing them, um, that there's something definitely missing because the music's not there. Mm. And the Star Wars tables feel like Star Wars because you get that Star Wars music. And I think, yeah. I keep on trying to, correct me if I'm wrong, Jared, but that I think the Zen only licensed music from the first movie, from A New Hope. I don't think they licensed it from, or the original trilogy maybe, that was what they licensed it for. It from the original trilogy because there's certainly no original music in the later tables, like Force no, Awakens, etc. No, no, no. They've been all... pulling everything from, from that original batch of music. Um, mm. Because it's insanely expensive. Because John Williams <laughs> likes to get paid, right? <laughs> uh, or at least his, or at least his agent does. Uh, yeah, so, so here's what I want to know. And if you're in the comment section, I would love to uh, have you guys chime in. We're also going to put uh, a poll up on Twitter and probably in the uh, Discord forum and the Digital Pinball Fans forum, just because I really do want to know uh, if this is something that you guys are would be interested in that maybe we can kind of convince Zen to go back and do this, which is, would you pay extra to have the official music on those tables? So having the Jurassic Park theme on all three Jurassic World tables. <laughs> um, well, they did Jurassic World and Mayhem and Park. Okay, yeah, so they did three different things. But anyway, yeah, doing the, the, the classic Jurassic Park theme or having the E.T. theme or the Jaws theme on the Jaws table. Um, you know, on Back to the Future, either using the Back to the Future music or, you know, going over to Huey Lewis and saying, hey, can we yeah. borrow, you know, a little Power of Love? <laughs> um, That's right. Or Back in Time, because I think he did that one too. Yes, he did two songs. Uh, and then if you wanted to go for the... For the triplicate, then go talk to ZZ Top and get Double Back put in there. Um, mm, yeah. But here's the thing. Knowing that music is insanely expensive, would you be willing to pay, and I'm just going to throw this number out here, $5 DLC to have the music for those tables? Is that insane? Would it make the tables better? Do you feel like, ah, I can live without the music? Um just kind of curious to know what everybody's thoughts are. What what are some of the thoughts that go through your mind there, Jared? Mm, it's an interesting idea. Uh, I think for those tables that you know are iconic, like like E.T. and Jaws and those, that you really need the music, particularly if it's well orchestrated. Pun half intended. Um, <laughs> to uh, you know, in certain points in the game it would just make a huge difference to your enjoyment of the game. It would be so much more immersive. You know, I mean, you know me, I'm a huge sound nut when it comes to like getting sound right in pinball. Um, and yeah, it would, it would make a huge difference. Um, I reckon to how you enjoyed the table. So for the cost of a large coffee, yeah, I'd probably pay that. Cause I know that like when I play Iron Man, I hate the music that it's that generic techno music that Zen used to love doing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, it, I would do anything. It just to get rid- nothing. I would do anything to get rid of that uh, techno blab that they have in there. Uh, I mean, I turn off the music whenever I play those. But if you were able to throw in a little Avengers music on there or something from the Marvel movies, uh, yeah, some orchestral stuff. Orchestral stuff. Because they've, 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 they've got a massive, massive back catalog, back catalog orchestral. of orchestral. Um, music, music in all, in of, those, all of those like Marvel, Marvel franchises. franchises. Like, like there's huge, there's huge amounts of content they could, they could use. use. You know, you know. So yeah, it would make a big difference. It's an interesting right. thought. That's what I'm saying. I'm, mm. I'm curious to know what people's opinions would be. If it's a, is it a make or break on the table? Because there's plenty of people that, my God, they say tables are broken for the silliest of reasons. I, how many people are saying that Whitewater is unplayable because of the hi hat? noise <laughs> oh yeah. oh yeah uh, that's, uh, that's yeah, yeah. That's it makes it incredibly, incredibly hard, hard to play that game yeah, yeah. no it's just, <laughs> no it's just play better play better play better play better folks if you can't play the game that well right. because so, of the noise. i had noise <laughs> so that's the thing though it's like well if i can put up with that i mean i personally don't even doesn't never bother me in the least um but if i can put up with that 
can't I put up with the generic music on the Jurassic Park table? But, mm. and this is where I'm saying, hey, if you're going to complain or you want, if you had that option, if it was just there as a DLC, an add-on, think of it as when TPA was doing, hey, do you want the pro add-on? Um, yeah, exactly. And, and the pro add-on, what was it? Five bucks per table. Five Five bucks. Five bucks. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it wasn't worth wasn't it. Worth it, it was but it was still bucks. five bucks. <laughs> <laughs> this, this, I think, would be at least a little bit worth it because it's going to be right there in your face every single time you play it. Every single, every time, single you time you play it. Yeah. yeah. But I, I, but think, I, for I think for bucks, five bucks, I, it would need to be well, be well integrated, integrated, integrated into the game. They couldn't, they couldn't just, just chuck, 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 a chuck a soundtrack, soundtrack into the game and just have the thing playing over and over again. It would need to be... Like they need, like they need to do a proper job, job of actually putting it in the game. Like where, like where a mode starts, starts for example, have that have that tied in properly to the music, to the music. and and you know the music, you know, the music of, that of that particular um scene in scene the movie. The movie. If, they're if they're doing scenes, scenes like, for like for example Alien, Alien. You know, and all, you know, and all the scenes and everything. everything. So, so actually, I'm that, told, Alien, strangely enough, is the one table that I think they did a fantastic job. Yeah, yeah, but you know what I mean, right? All the movie scenes in in all the Star Wars ones, you know, have that that music that's linked to the scene. That would that would be for real Star Wars fans. That would be a huge, a huge difference, I think. Um, so yeah, so yeah, I think if that that is if that is what I got for five US dollars, it's important to note the currency here too. We're talking five US dollars, so you know, like thirty five Australian dollars at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's more, yeah, it's more, well, you know, well, it's more, you know, like, it's more eight, like eight, but still, but still you know, you know, uh, uh, it, I think I'd probably, probably on some, on some tables, tables, I don't know if I'd jump, jump for all of them. Some of the tables, some some of the tables I'm just not really a big fan, fan on, of, of, but for those, but for those that tables I am, that I am, like, I play a lot and I enjoy, yeah, I'd probably invest the money in that. Okay, we're going to do a a temporary break here in the action because apparently Jared's got an echo and we had an an issue earlier with the noise so jared we're going to try a little test here with you uh okay okay i'm going to see if this eliminates uh your audio at all okay jared go ahead and talk we need the turn off the echo button in in twitch <laughs> all right folks did you hear jared talking there in our comment section please give us a heads up It's taking a moment. What I noticed, Jared, was that uh, we were starting to get the uh, the audio delay. That has worked that... for now. Okay. We well, go. we'll take for now. All right. Yeah. This is this is. It's a problem. <laughs> we know. Yeah. I don't. We haven't been able to figure out for the life of us why suddenly uh, Jared's lips go out of sync, and clearly that's what was happening here with the audio. That uh, I had two different factors going on. But so long as you guys can hear them now. Okay, we can yeah. advance. We, we can move forward. All right, so, uh, yeah, I'm going to post this up uh, in some way, shape, or form up on Twitter, and I'll leave it up there for a couple of days. Uh, so if you have an opinion, please go uh, go pop into the poll, and uh, if you're not on Twitter, look for it also on Digital Pinball Fans or on the uh, Pinball FX3 Discord chat page, which, mm. if you haven't been over to, is rather can get lively. Just saying. Yeah, I haven't gone onto the Discord page. I'm in the um the Steam forum so now. So, oh, good, because I never go over there. <laughs> yeah, I I normally just like when whenever I get the chance to actually open up Steam, it's usually to play games, and I see like that. Oh, you've got 25 new messages. They go mm, maybe later, and <laughs> I never really check them. Um, but uh, I'm still in there, so my I have an intention to go and look through some of the threads. But I often don't get a chance because I just actually, you know, want to play games when I'm on um, uh, Steam, not read forums. Shocking. <laughs> yeah. I did go, uh, so I downloaded the free GTA 5 that uh, Epic Games was offering. Mm -hmm. uh, and I used to be a huge GTA fan back when it was GTA 3, Vice City. And oh, then, Vice City is huge. Oh, I yeah. love Vice City. Uh, but then I fell out for San Andreas, it just didn't grab me. I think mm -hmm. I got about halfway through it. And then uh, GTA 4 did nothing for me. And so I didn't even bother with GTA 5. But hey, it's free. So, you know. Yeah, we know the video hasn't uh, synced back up. There's nothing we can do about that, unfortunately. That's a cool <laughs> feature. That's a, that's a feature of our show, that one. Um, out of sync audio and video. So, um, yeah, it's one of the premium features we often, uh, we offer. And you're all subscribed to it. But then uh, I started messing around with because of uh, 
you know, Jared's cool little pins in here. I'm gonna I'm gonna show these to you folks. Mm. The the uh, Mad Max um, pins that uh, that he has. So uh, here's one right there, and then there's good old Morton Joe. All right, a couple of the War Boys there, and then there's Max himself. Anyway, I had um, uh, I downloaded a long time ago for free on the PS4 when they were doing their monthly game of it, uh, the Mad Max game. And I was all excited oh, yeah. for the game, and then I was like, why did I never play it? I don't. I, I know I loaded it up, but that was about the end of it. And then I realized, well, that was when my son was going through his uh, whole brain surgery thing. So there's a good reason why I never... Yeah, that, that's, that's probably a fair reason for like sort of taking a gap away from literally everything. Uh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know. So I uh, I had been playing the Sniper Elite 4, which was kind of fun, just taking insanely long shots in World War II and knocking off Nazis. But I finished that. <laughs> <laughs> it is, Jared. Trust me. It's quite therapeutic being 300 yards out and they can't hear your gunfire and just, poing, headshot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, and so I, uh, I was like, I should play that Mad Max game. So I, I started playing it. And it's totally like a GTA. Totally. Just in terms of, it's that open world. You're wandering around, picking up missions. There's roads for you to drive down, and the roads are heavily traveled by, you know, other war boys. And you can do little car battles and get out of your car and do things. I mean, it's not totally GTA, but it's certainly along that same vein of... Uh, driving around smashing things <laughs> yeah it's that classic genre that we all know and love yeah, yeah. you know it's, it's gonna scare me if uh if i get back into the old uh guitar hero uh realm of things but something tells me i'm not going to no well you know you've got to have deep pockets if you want to get back into that realm no because um, i already have all the i have all the games all the instruments all the dlc all right yeah well no i <laughs> let's talk about dlc for a moment again folks <laughs> You want to talk about insane DLC? <laughs> it's so, a hero. Oh case my. In point. Actually, Rock Band was the uh, the main offender yeah. here. Because Guitar Hero just would put out a new disc every year. Mm. And you'd have to then buy that disc and that get all the songs. And it took them a while to make it so that you could import the previous disc's music into your current library. But then, oh, yeah. of course, that importing... Here we go again. Some artists went, mm, no, you yeah, don't nah. want to. And so then those songs didn't carry over. So if you wanted to play those songs, and I'm looking at Tool in particular, uh, nope, mm. you got to stick with one that particular game if you wanted to play their song. And so you'd have to go bust out the disc, put it back in, play that, and then, oh, wow. okay, I'm done with that, and then go back and you know do the other. And then Rock Band took it in a completely different way, way which was, well, we're going to put out our bass disc, and then we're just going to, kick out new songs every month. Yeah. And it would be like two songs a month, basically. And they would okay. charge five bucks per song. Or, I mean, per pack. Pack. Yeah, right. Which, again, hey, us playing pinball, we're kind of aware of that. I think, I honestly truly believe that's the model that Farsight uh, built their platform on. Probably, yeah. Um, But then all of a sudden, I looked one day at the list of DLC that they had, and they had, yeah, we could see you, Mace. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he's all, he's being sneaky because I know what he wants. He wants his tablet. Here. No, I don't. Oh, okay. Uh, we can see you, buddy. Just stand up. You look more foolish. Yeah, you can stand up. <laughs> um, no, I looked at this list. They had over two thousand songs. Two thousand. Two thousand songs. Five dollars a pop. That's a lot of money, Chris. That's <laughs> insane. And then, so as as the uh, time went on and the fad was fading, those of us that were still playing online, because that was where it was at, it was online. Man, he didn't close my closet door. Ugh. Um. So the, the portal to the netherworld is open. Right. Quickly it's closed. like, <laughs> good God, there's books back there. Um. <laughs> and a really old stereo. Um. As I, 
because I I paid to import all the music into basically Rock Band three was I think the last okay. iteration, and I'd be playing against people online. Well, you could see what other songs you know how big their DLC library was, mm -hmm. and my library of over three hundred songs, yep, yeah, not good enough. And so they they hop back offline. They wouldn't connect with you. Oh, they wouldn't even play with you because no. you didn't have enough titles no. to choose from. No, because they were like, I've already played all those songs. I don't want to play those anymore. I want to play all the new stuff. Oh, wow. So yeah. then you basically, there was a classist war in <laughs> in Rock Band because you didn't have enough songs. So therefore you were like the, the downtrodden and you never got yeah, any you're, you're, people you're to play online. Yeah, you're some popper. Go, Please, sir, play with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I'm like, uh, wait a second. And, 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 by the time we got to where they weren't, uh, you know, it was be between PS3 and PS4, or excuse me, yeah, because um, that was this big discussion of, hey, when the PS4 comes out, is there going to be a new Rock Band game? And is all that DLC going to carry over? Because some people were going, I have all, by this point, 4,000 songs. Whoa, okay, that's a... Uh... Is that twenty thousand dollars? That's what I'm saying. I don't know how much money they pumped into this thing. Again, if you're pumping, you know, five bucks every week or two, you don't really notice it, right? Yeah, well, it's just like buying a coffee, really, isn't it? It's like, oh yeah, yeah, right. I'll just go and get my songs, you know. But That's then, when you but then when you have to go do a platform shift, you realize how much you just spent and that you're landlocked on that platform. Well, yeah, because you, I mean, there's no way they're going to carry over those songs for free, right? No, no. Uh, we, we've been, well, we've been following how DLC works in, in pinball for long enough. And pinball is probably the more, you know, <laughs> um, generous DLC side of things. Like, uh, when we're talking about music, well, Zen got no been, hope. Certainly. Zen, well, yes, that's, that's true. Zen is definitely the ones that uh, will try and look after you where they can, but yeah no way like we're talking about activision as well aren't we for rock band so no no activision was uh guitar hero ah uh, yes rock band was uh harmonics oh harmonics yeah still though they're <laughs> they're still trying to make money here <laughs> right? well and i think honestly i think because i saw the writing on the wall for that where i questioned wait a second what happens when the ps4 comes out and I was mm. just looking at my uh, pinball arcade library in that second season going, I don't think I'm going to, because I know I'm going to get a PS4, mm. but I don't want to rebuy everything again. And that's when I put the brakes on it. And then somebody sent me a, uh, a, a code for the PC. And once I started playing on the PC, it was like, you know what? I'm going to stay over here because I'm never going to have to worry about my library not migrating with me that's right all i need is a compatible pc and i'm done like yeah like the console game is it's it's good like there, there's trade-offs as we already know what they are like convenience over you know ownership really well and again i mean like even right now i have hooked up to my tv a ps2 a ps3 a ps4 a switch uh mm. i did have a wii u hooked up it's annoying having that many things hooked up to your <laughs> to your it TV. Is. It's really annoying. <laughs> it is, and but it's the only way you can actually enjoy all those past titles, you right? Know? Because but then I and then I pop over on my PC and it's hey, there's Steam, and hey, I flip over my laptop and even though it can't play games very well, I could down. I go hey, there's Steam. I could just download the games over here. You know, mm -hmm. I don't have to unplug and haul it around and all that other stuff. No, it's just there, and you can you can play it as long as your hardware supports it. Go for it. Yeah, and so, that's good. I mean, like there's trade offs. I mean, like portability wise, PC sucks, but at the same time, I'd rather just sit at a desk and play a game rather than have to worry about, geez, what's my hundreds of dollars worth of um, downloads and stuff going to do when this thing dies? You know, it's just I, it's a thought that it would just plague me. I reckon if I had a console. Yeah. I mean, that's why I, I'm seriously questioning with the PS5 coming out. I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to wind up getting it or not. Um, I don't. Well. I mean, it's going to be, yeah. let's put it to you this way. The only reason why I get it 
is for PlayStation exclusive titles. Yeah, yeah. But the problem is that the only titles that I really cared about anymore were Uncharted and The Last of Us, of which Uncharted is done. Last of Us is getting its sequel coming out in a couple of weeks uh, for the PS4. And other than that, the exclusives that I liked, like I was into God of War, but uh, I mean, who knows if there's going to be another game of that. So it's kind of like the titles that I really liked my PlayStation 4 to begin with are all kind of winding down and done. And I'm not mm. latching on to any of the new exclusives. Um, and so I'm just playing third-party stuff that pops up on the PC instead. Yeah. So. Yeah, look, I don't know. I Yeah, I I don't have an answer to how I feel about consoles. Like the the idea of a Switch sounds nice to me. Um, but you know, I don't really have a lot of time to play games at the moment, so you know, having just another thing that I need to do, like to, to, having another thing I need to look at all the time reminding me that I don't have time to do anything fun. Uh, isn't really a good prospect for me at the moment. Well, I, I know my boy loves the Switch. He, I mean, he. What's funny is he almost rarely ever plugs it into the TV. He almost oh, always wow. plays it exclusively Hand in portable mode. Yeah. So he should. He would be definitely a candidate for um, the the Switch Lite. No, he no because he he actually loves playing it with the Pro Controller. Ah, right. Yeah. So. And I don't think the Switch Lite allows you to connect other hard like peripherals through bluetooth or does it i don't know honestly i don't know um uh, but it's nice i think it would allow to i think you can connect other controllers to it but and, and here's the other thing that i don't like about the switch light you can't use the flip grip on it yeah you can't which is why you see heaps of switch lights like i've the most of the things on on our local you know craigslist like um services over here you see people selling switch lights and they go oh yeah i've had it for a week but now i'm buying a switch yeah. and i don't need it anymore like it's, i don't like it just seems like a i get where they're going with it but there's just you get to the point where you go no i really want to do this thing with it and you can't and you go well i'm stuck aren't i like i've i've either got to just suck it up and stick with this one that i've got or go for the full switch, but the thing is, at the moment, you can't buy a switch for love nor money here in Australia because everyone bought them with COVID nineteen. Uh, I was just going to say everything is poof gone. <laughs> yeah, it's it's everything is gone. You know what I did? I dragged out this, is, this. You'll laugh at this. I dragged out a a webcam that I had in my e waste bag that I was going to take to the dump. Okay, and it was like a a ten year old Logitech C six hundred. I had to look up the model number because it wasn't on there. And it's marked under C600, which is a two megapixel um, camera webcam. It just does 720p, just. And I sold the thing for 40 bucks because <laughs> people are that desperate for webcams down here that they will buy a 10 year old one for 40 bucks because wow. you cannot get them. Well, yep. apparently, uh, I was just overhearing conversation in the other room today. Uh, jigsaw puzzles. Can't find them. Can't find them. All right. Um, Board games as well. I, I, I mm -hmm. hear we're pretty hard to get. Mm -hmm. um, the one that got... kind of, the thing that kind of blows me away is no bicycles. Oh, really? No bikes? No, because where do all the bikes come from? China. China. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, it sort of makes you realize that we rely probably a little bit too heavily on China for things. Yeah, just a bit. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know. If we were manufacturing locally, yes, we have to pay a lot more money, but we at least control our supply chains. That reminds uh, me, I saw a picture. Uh, the, the sheer number of bicycles that are produced in China is staggering. And oh, yeah. they do a thing that's kind of like the uh, electric scooters that just get left. <laughs> Whereas oh, yes. it's bike sharing, more or less, right? Oh, yeah. But these things wind up littering the streets. And mm. so, and piling up. And so a truck comes by and scoops up all the bikes. And then they take it to a bike graveyard. This picture that I saw, it was a flyover with a drone. Yeah. Over this roving hill. And I thought it was spring flowers in bloom. Oh. No, it was just all the different colored bicycles stacked 
in this wow. essential graveyard just for acres. <laughs> wow. Just the just bones of bikes. Just the bones of bikes. Wow. And and you and, and they said something about that they were basically they produce twice as many bikes as there are people in China. <laughs> okay. <laughs> who is using the other ones? Or they just well, they're in the, the trash. <laughs> oh, jeez. You just think of how much of a waste that is. Surely they could just take all those bikes and just melt them down. And make well, I'm sure bikes. they get melted down eventually. But yeah, oh, that's, there's probably know. such a backlog of them that they have to put them somewhere before they can actually get into the meltdown queue. Right, right. But yeah, no, <sighs> I, I walked. Uh, we're going to get one of our bikes tuned up. And so I'd gone to a, a bike store to, to make sure that they were doing it. And the only bikes that they had, and this is a proper bike shop, uh, the only bikes that they had were all thousand dollar and more bicycles. Mm, None so of the, the elite bikes that no one, loaned mum and dad and their kids would want to buy. It's, it's the bikes for the serious biker. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Like, and, you know, we're, we're doing triathlon sort of thing, or like you know, right, serious mountain bike biking rides. and stuff. Yeah, and then yeah, and then yeah. just even at the local Target, I noticed that there wasn't a single bike up on their wall of bikes. <laughs> Wow. And, and those are the dirt cheap bikes that basically are the landfill of China. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like they'll last for a couple of years and that's about it. Yeah. So anyway, amazing. Uh, speaking of landfills. So Pinball Hall of Fame, Las Vegas. Yeah. They just broke ground on their new site. Ah. Their new site is actually on the strip. Uh, it's just south of the uh, Mandalay Bay right near the Welcome to Las Vegas sign on the strip. Right. Um, and basically, <laughs> you got to love Tim Arnold. Tim Arnold is a, is a character to be sure. And he goes, we're going to make sure that we have this gigantic sign of Pinball Hall of Fame so that anybody that is taking their picture of the Welcome to Las Vegas sign will He's have our, be... scene in the, our sign in the background. <laughs> And then on Frozen. top of that, on top of that, he says that uh, on the top of their roof, because they're literally right underneath the flight pattern of all flights coming into the uh, to the airport there, right? Oh, right. And you'll be able to, so you'll be able to see the top of the building from the airplane windows. Just you know, basically, building here, airplanes are a little bit here, so they'll be able to see. And he says yeah, he's right. going to put in gigantic letters along the roof, "Welcome to Reno," just to mess with people's heads. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what a troll I love him anyway he was doing an interview when they were asking where he got all of his tables you know all of his machines from because he's got he's got a warehouse of over a thousand machines yeah he's got a collection yeah and he basically said that back in the 80s he would go around with a uh, I think he said it was a bread truck and hmm. all the all the arcades they just dumped these things, these these pinball machines. There was no resale. There was it was you used them for the couple of months that you know got your money back from them or whatever, and hey, you got to make you, space, keep them, throw them to the dump. And rather than having them take them to the dump, he offered to come and pick them up, pick them up for him. So he literally just picked up free pinball machines. Yeah, yeah. Crazy business, right? Or, Lucky him. Yeah, I, I, if it wasn't free, I think he was uh, he was saying that the most anybody was asking was two hundred bucks. <laughs> You're right. So yeah, and even I, back in the eighties, that was cheap. Uh, yeah, and and I've talked to a few people who said that they used to go to the dumps, to the city dump, and look for pinball machines in the dump. Yeah, which is just. I mean, you think about yeah. You think about where we are today, and there's not a soul that would do that. You think about what how, how people lost their minds when they watched that uh, TNT amusements video where they threw a pinball machine off the roof. Yeah, and that was a junker, yeah, <laughs> as they then absolute... had to go say they were like it was irredeemably no way no how going to be fixed. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it was just beyond anything. Yeah, but you know now even like there's there's an industry around junked pinball machines. Like there's a, a company called Tilt Cycle that manufactures pieces of art with old bits of pinball machines. So even the old ones that are junkers get reborn into something else now. Like they would never go to the dump now. 
Well, that's probably also because you now got to pay a dumping fee. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. And they're big, I mean, heavy. So you know, you cut, it costs a lot. So yeah. Oh man. Yeah, Crazy. the times so, will be. I mean, right. God, can you imagine though if it uh, again hop into your time machine, and you know you find yourself oh, go plop back into the go... '80s, and oh, you're just it's like it's like the sports almanac of pinball, isn't it? Really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, first things first, you're like, okay, I'm going to buy one of all of these and never open it and just leave it yeah. mint in box. Um, yeah. Take the, well, take the batteries out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Pop it open long enough to pop the batteries out and that's it. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, I'm going to go just to all these arcades and be like, are you done with that yet? Do you, do you want me to take that off your hands? I can. Is this, is this taking up space for you? Like, you know, how much do you want me just to take it away for you? Like, maybe give you a couple of hundred for it or something? Like, you know, put the new Space Invaders in. It'll make you more money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it should be incredible when this place opens up because it's being specifically designed for, uh, you know, to their specifications this time around. Mm. I think he said that they're able to double the amount of tables wow. that they'll have up, which currently i think they're at 200 and some um they're going to have a section of classic arcade cabinets also mm -hmm. and he says that they're already they're buying any new table that comes out they buy um and put right. in and put in but he says that's still not enough to fill the floor space necessarily for what they want so they're wow. going to be putting out some just really really oddball old uh unique like pins. wood rails and stuff like that yeah yeah that you just never you would never ever see and this is what it was great when i went to pacific pinball museum the stuff they have on the floor there you know it, it, this i would never have seen them if i hadn't actually gone to america and gone to this place to see wood rails like they you just they're not available anywhere so yeah Having these really odd ones is the reason why you go to something like Pinball Hall of Fame or Pacific Pinball Museum. Because where else are you going to see these things? Like maybe in a private collection of a person who's like over 80 um, <laughs> because they're the sort of people who collect wood rails. So, yeah, it's, a, it's an incredibly important thing that, um, that he's doing there in in Reno. <laughs> yeah, Re yeah, Reno, Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> So I, that's one of those places that I, I'm going to be excited when it opens up because that's literally oh, the yeah. only reason why I want to go to Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, because gambling is is a mugs game. You don't do that if you're smart. Well, especially um, uh, they they Las Vegas is about to open up again. Oh right, okay. Within yeah. like I think next week, um, and everybody's going. Well, how the hell do you do that when it's have social distancing? Yeah. Well, <laughs> every second pokey, you know. Every second seat on the table. <laughs> well, we'll check out some of the uh, the things. So, I think they said they're limiting to like roulette is only going to have three people at it. Craps will only have six people at it max. Um, for like blackjack, there's going to be a plastic divider between mm -hmm. the seats and oh, a yeah. plastic divider in front of the dealer. Uh, decks of cards are going to be swapped out regularly. Regularly, um, yeah. and then I imagine and here's where I'm wondering. Like, are they just going to toss the decks? Or are they going to have some lady in the back with a rag wiping down each card? Because I was like, hey, you know what? They're not going to have a problem with uh, marked decks anymore. Uh, uh, no, uh, they, they certainly won't. You know, at the craps table, when new shooter comes out, new shooter gets new dice. You're not throwing the same dice that the uh, past shooter shot with. Oh, yeah. Um, chips are going to regularly be cleaned. And that's another one. I was like, man... I mean, because when you're sitting at a table, you're playing with your chips nonstop. Yeah. Uh, the, I think, hand sanitizer in the uh, slot pits is going to be basically every other machine. <laughs> yeah, basically, yeah. Well, th yeah, I th this will change pretty much everything to do with, well, everything to do with gambling publicly. Um, and I think that, I, I don't know how it's going to be like gambling is essentially a, a social activity. And I think having these necessary things in place, it's going to change the whole vibe of it. And I, I just wonder if it's going to be as attractive for people as it was before. Well, I tell you what, you can use it to your advantage when you're playing poker. Cause you know, right before, you know, you, you got your hand, you're kind of bluffing, you know, you're bluffing, you're trying to shake everybody else off the, uh, off the pot. 
And so you just go, Thank you! and then you push all in. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's right. Hey, I don't want those oh, chips. Fold, no, 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 fold, you're, you're full. You, you, you keep that. We're good. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> yep. Oh, man. No. Anyway, so, folks, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, next episode is episode 200. Hmm. How do we do that? <laughs> By showing up. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, it was just the show up award. And um, about stuff for an hour each couple of weeks. So here's what I'm going to throw out to you because it's probably going to take us, you know, two or three weeks before we get to that show, just with the sheer fact that there's no pinball news. Mm. Look at this show; you'll see how we uh, half pinball, half not. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of spacing these things just in hopes that some news drops so then we can do an episode. So, But here's my question for you. That episode 200, what would you guys like to see in episode 200? Is there anything you want us to reminisce about? Anything you want us to cover? Um, stories that you want us to retell? I don't know. Please help us figure this one out. Uh, drop us a line over there on the old... Uh, Twitter and uh, let us know that way or you can drop us an email blah blah blockade at gmail.com because it's hard to do a special episode when there's nothing special going on yeah I mean what do we do for the um, the 100th show we had a few um, guests of uh, podcast passed on yeah we had uh, we had Jeff Strong back on and I can't remember did we have uh, Sean on that I think episode. he did pop in. Yeah, I think he did actually pop in. I think so. Um, yeah. So anyway, but I mean, there's no guarantee that we can secure them. So, no. uh, and we've already done our interview with Mel recently, so we can't have one of those. Um, <laughs> so it might be it might be the uh, the the classic lockdown birthday party uh, <laughs> that everyone is had to have. Where should we have some cars drive by and honk? Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it may be very non-eventful, but you know, if, if yeah, like Chris says, if you've got any ideas that you want us to um, explore for the next show, let us know, and we'll see what we can do. Yeah, because I mean, we kind of do the show for you guys anyway. Uh, yeah. So, like we said earlier, we don't do it for the fame nor the money. <laughs> so <laughs> we do it for the free for you games. <laughs> yeah, for the free games. Yeah. <laughs> um... <laughs> All right. Uh, how else? How else can you uh, guys show your support? Oh yeah, you know we sell T-shirts. I'm thinking, Jared. There's also uh, over on um, this week in pinball. Apparently, they now sponsor a T-shirt site, so we might have to go that route also. Mm. Then, while I'm saying that, this week in pinball has a database of everybody that does a show about pinball. Check it out. And uh, if you could be so kind, drop us a review, drop us a a star rating so that uh, we can be relevant. Uh, We've got a couple. We just want some more. It would be nice to get some more. And it's free to do that. You don't have to pay a single cent. So if you don't want to support the show financially, do it by spreading the word and giving us nice ratings here and there. Yeah, and we're not saying that you have to give us a five star. Just don't give us a one star. (laughs) Yeah, don't don't give us a one. Like... (laughs) I don't think we're that bad. <laughs> I, 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 we're fine with with constructive criticism, but yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah, in before in before folks saying that my audio is out of sync and they need to fix that before they give me a five. <laughs> I and then we would completely go. You know, show is great except for their audio syncing uh, yeah. and the echoes and uh... yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, beyond that, that's what we have to look forward to next time. It's episode 200 that'll be packed with... Stuff and all things. There you go, folks. All right, be sure to uh, keep an eye out for the polls that I'll be posting and uh, make your make your thoughts known that way. Until next time, bye bye Bye-bye!